Hello everyone, how are you? And welcome to your daily for about the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, right around there of September. I hope that all of you are well. And uh, yeah, let's get into our really quick daily reading here. Now, I did get a serious message last night. And, you know, as I go through these detoxes, um, sometimes the the clairs will be heightened. Okay, so the clairaudience, clairvoyance, I can hear people talking, I can hear, you know, before I did my detox, it was kind of muffled, it was kind of coming and going, it was, it was like I would see something for a little while, and then it would, then it would disappear. And I could get the general vicinity or the general location or the general genre of the area people were in. But now I'm like, I'm seeing stuff where I feel like I'm like, I'm intruding on people's thoughts. So um, I need to do a much better job at, you know, communicating and talking with, you know, my higher self and, you know, letting my higher self know that if I do hear anything, it is for my highest good in whatever way uh, that would make sense for me. Um, I certainly don't want to be intruding on people's conversations. This is not my intent, but this does sometimes happen when I detox. Now I'm getting names, I'm getting locations, I'm getting uh, actual scenarios. Uh, before we get started, I need to let you know what this downloaded, and this is going to be specific for somebody or something like this is happening in your life. So um, court is in session. Okay. I'm getting that song. You guys might be able to help me out with this song because a lot of times when I the song comes in, um, I have a hard time placing it because I'm channeling at the same time. The court is in session. The verdict is in. No appeal on the docket today. Just my own sin. Should have been dead on a Sunday morning. Banging my head. Ain't got no time. It, I, I don't quite know where that's coming from, but the court is in session. Okay. Now, someone is feeling as though they have to appeal or they have to do all of the work. Because something either, something backfired or something was misunderstood. Now, this is an innocent, by the way. This is an innocent. So the innocent shared some information with someone. They shared some information and they shared that information with somebody that they've known for a very, very long time, very long time. But someone else was also there. Okay, so it was kind of like friend of a friend. And whoever the innocent was, the innocent said, well, you know, I, I trust this close friend of mine. I mean, and they're good friends with this person, so I should be able to uh, show them or reveal to them or share a document with them, whatever. And it was, it was almost immediately, it was like two or three days later, the next thing you know, there is this massive outrage that is going on with this innocent. They're hearing that they're this type of person. They're not that type of person. They're hearing that, you know, um, maybe they're unhinged or they're crazy or um, like some sort of personal detail came out. Let's just put it that way. And so this innocent is having to go to court so uh, like basically what happened was is it was on the stairs it was like on the stairs at a school or it was on the stairs somewhere and um but i feel like it was like a school or a university but there were stairs involved and um it doesn't have to be a school or a university but i feel like the stairs were outside kind of that's what kind of feel and 
this innocent is confronting this person. And by the by the way, I got her name. I can't even believe I remembered the name, but I remember the name. And um, and this is a strange name, Myra, Myrna, something like that. Okay, doesn't mean that person is the instigator. It just means that it means that that name was significant within this conversation, Myra or Myrna. And that may mean something in a different language. I don't know. Uh, so this innocent is confronting this person and they said that was supposed to stay between you and us. That was not supposed to be, you know, lambasted everywhere. And this Mirna person or this Mira, Myra person, they, um, they looked at the innocent and they said, that had to be shared. I did what I was supposed to do. Okay. And then immediately the innocent finds themselves in this long, long hallway. It's a very long hallway. So um, if we're looking at, how, how would I do this if, if from your direction? Okay. So there's this long hallway right here. And the innocent is like right here. The steps were out here. So here comes the innocent, thinking that they are going to have to defend themselves. Court is in session over here. Okay. So the innocent goes in and she looks at everybody sitting in court and she's like, I don't even know how I'm going to defend myself against all these people. I have no clue how this is going to happen. None. And so she goes back kind of in the hallway and she tries to calm herself down. She's getting her answers ready. She's getting, you know, um, you know, her, her wherewithal around her. Okay. She's getting centered again. And so she slowly starts going back ready to face judgment. If supposedly she is proven guilty, even though she's innocent, so she goes very slowly and almost somberly, but with her head held high. So she's going, she's going. All of a sudden, there is this massive group of people behind her. Massive. They've got briefcases. They've got suitcases. They've got documents. They've got everything. They, And it, it appeared to me these were all women, but there may have been some men there, but that's just what I saw. And so the innocent looks back at these people and she says who are you because she thinks she's being kind of bombarded from both ends of of the like bookended by these people like more people were coming in more than what she already had to defend herself against and um they looked at her they said her name and that name I don't quite remember. But they said her name. And they said, we're going to win this court case for her. And this person, the innocent, she was like, but... Because she was kind of pretending almost like she was not the person who she was. It was almost like she was there to represent herself, but nobody knew it was her. Kind of anonymous in a way, like like cloaked in a way. And so she was just having this discussion with this massive, massive group of people that were coming in and they were well-dressed. They were well-heeled. They knew what they were talking about. And this innocent says to them, but how do you know she's innocent? How do you know that you know, she hasn't fallen or she didn't do those things or she, you know, maybe, you know, fell off, you, you know, the, the horse a few times. Maybe, maybe she lost sight, you know, and, and she went outside of herself and, and she acted out of character and these people just looked at her and they said, she's innocent. And we're going to win the court case. And she doesn't have to do a damn thing because we're going to win. And she's going to be more popular. She's going to be more, you know, um, 
she's going to come out of this smelling like a rose. Uh, she's she's innocent, and there's no there's no other way. We have too much evidence for her than we have against her. And so the innocent kind of just stepped aside. And this entire group of people, they walked down this hall and they sat next to all of these other people that were there to judge this innocent. And I'll tell you, these people did not look good. They didn't. They looked like gray. Their pallor was off. They almost looked like they were representatives of a lower vibrational energy. And so all of these people, they're marching in like one by one by one. And that innocent who thought she was going to be sitting at this table by herself with like 10 chairs to the right of her and 10 chairs to the left of her and the other table was full, all of a sudden that entire table is full and they brought even more chairs out. And so she came in last and she sat there and she was cloaked because she felt as though the court was in session without her physical presence there, but her energetic presence was there going through the court case. And it's as though these people who were supporting her, they knew her energy was there. The other people did not, but this group did. In fact, one or two of them in particular, they're, they're women, two of these women. They were looking at the innocent and smiling at her energy, even though she was cloaked, even though she was, it's, it's like they were speaking telepathically. I don't know how to describe it. And this innocent looked back to find out where Myrna or Mira or Myra was at, and she was gone. She was gone. She was just wiped out of the vicinity, out of, out of the environment. She was wiped. It's like she just disappeared into thin air. There's the story, okay? That's the message. That's the download I got. So what I'm hearing and how I'm going to translate that analogous to the story is your spirit guides, your ancestors, people watching over you, if you have been accused of something that you're not, you will be vindicated in spiritual court. You don't have to do anything. And I've mentioned this before, but man, this came in clear as day. You will be vindicated in spiritual court. The court is in session. The verdict is in. No appeal on the docket today except my own sin. Someone is being judged for their sin. Someone is in court for their sins against an innocent. Great changes are about to happen. We have an eclipse coming up in Pisces, the exact sign that Saturn, the planet of karma, is in. This is unprecedented. This is going to get interesting. A lot of death and rebirth, a lot of change, a lot of tables flipping. So I would highly suggest, and you guys can take this mission, whether or not you choose to accept it, but keep 
keep that door that's about to be open for you very high because everything that you do up until that that point where the eclipse happens especially on the day of the eclipse especially if you're a Pisces there's like this door and I don't know how to describe this vision but there's this door and there's this clock ticking and remember we're all on different like kind of time continuums and timelines and everything else but but time is time is relative in 5d 60 70 but in 3d time is not relative it's something you can never get back so the way that we manage our lives is via time and so what's happening is there is this massive door and it's labeled with the date and the time of the eclipse and where this is at in your chart and when i go through the eclipse energies we'll get into that and i will place those on both rumble and youtube however um that clock is ticking it's counting down okay and you're standing there and as soon as the clock strikes the right time there's this little i'm seeing this little um it's like an automatic uh what do you call it it's an automatic like safe like a lock Another analogy, really, really quick. I don't, I don't want to get off on a different tangent, but it's very similar to um, Laura Croft and and you know when Angelina Jolie when she was Laura Croft and she was in that final place. Uh, it was in like the tundras. It was in a cave, and she had this, you know grain of sand right and she could control time but the thing was is it had to be done at a certain time where all the planets were aligned all the like the sun was aligned it was an eclipse or it was whatever it was solar flare i don't know but something was activated this is exactly what's happening with this eclipse so you're looking at this beautiful door you don't know what's behind the door but you can create what you will be introduced to because energy can go through anything energy can go through walls energy can go through anything no matter how strong or impenetrable it is so there's this door and here's a clock and the clock is digital and it's ticking down ticking down ticking down and all of a sudden it reaches the exact point of the lunar eclipse in Pisces it's like that's the last one okay zero 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 all of a sudden what you do is you see you see this lock it automatically starts to shift and open itself up and you know and you're sitting in anticipation what's behind that door with this eclipse because i know for a fact that this eclipse is in pisces and i know for a fact that pisces rules the hidden the unconscious the subconscious the the past my karma unconditional love clandestine affairs sacrifices addictions hospitals research psychosis like i know psychic abilities i know what type of energy could be behind there i know this is what is being eclipsed out of my life or this 
where I'm at right now, something is being eclipsed out so I can move into better programming and better karma as I create that new chapter or I start that new book in my life. Some of you might be starting a book. Some of you might be starting a new series. Some of you might be starting a new story of your life. So what I'm getting at here is what you want to do up until that point is you want to change your energy just enough. It doesn't have to be big. It could just be something where you're just saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to make this change in my life. And I'm going to get this chi moving. I'm going to get this energy moving. And for some of you, this is going to be huge. For others of you, it's going to be subtle. It, it just will. I mean, that's just the way it works. But I would recommend doing something to raise your vibration in a significant way. Yes, clearing and cleansing does help. But I am talking about really getting the energy moving. Like when you're by your when when you are by yourself, put on some of your favorite music and just dance. Just dance. Raise that vibration. And really get that chi moving. Get that energy moving in the right direction where you're celebrated, you're having fun, you're celebrating yourself, you're, you're manifesting your thoughts that you're, that you're speaking into the ethers as you're doing that. You're raising the vibration. And as you do that, that energy will be reflected in what's behind the door. So I hope you guys are kind of picking up what I'm laying down. That will raise the energy behind the door. <clears throat> so when that door opens, you're like, oh, same crap, different day. <laughs> for some people, it'll be same crap, different day. But for others, it will be like, I'm transforming. I am no longer who I was in the past. I am a completely different person. I'm not going to play that part anymore. And for those of you that want to participate, I'm actually going to be setting my um, my timer, my uh, clock to 9 p.m. tonight, Central Standard Time. And I'm going to be dancing. I'm going to be raising my vibration. And if any of you want to join at that same time, maybe we can help each other raise our vibration. Maybe we can bless one another in that way. Okay? Just something to think about. Because the clock is ticking down. There are layers to each of our periods of growth and levels of growth. What somebody was very, very concerned about um, the fact that, you know, we have until November to you know, get our stuff straight before that karma starts coming back around and Saturn goes direct in Pisces. And it's not the end of the world. Okay, it's not, there's other opportunities. It's just for this specific opportunity. It's best to clear out as much karma as you can and just work on it. As long as you're making the effort, you will move forward. You will be on the boat. You will ascend to another level. And those people on the boat and those people that are leaving dock right now, very slowly, some people are jumping on the boat because they're running late. Maybe they got into traffic. Who knows? But remember, those boats dock at other places. 
They dock at this city, and then they dock at this city, and then they dock at this city. Some of you are going to get off on different cities. You're not going to be on the boat forever. You're going to your specific energetic match. You're going there. So for those of you on the boat that may have handled or have really dealt with some, some bad karma in your life, but you haven't dealt with maybe some other things, it's a little bit tougher, it's a little bit harder, but you're working on it, you're going to get off in, in this city. Okay, this is where everybody is at who's dealing with their karma, but they're still a little stuck. There's still little, little things here and there that, that they've not figured out yet. And then you got another group of people and they're like, okay, bon voyage, uh, we're going to go to the next town. So they go to the next town. And those people are completely clear. They really have healed their, themselves and their, their, their issues in their life or their karma. And they want to start giving good karma out to people. Well, this town is just going to put them on a different level and is now going to be testing their ability to withstand creating karma. We create the karma. Period. It is us. We create it. Everything that you're going through, everything that I'm going through, everything that my dogs are going through, whatever it is, any type of conscious thought creates the karma. Maybe not my dogs as much, but you know what I'm saying. And then you've got other people who are aware that they have a lot of karma and they're trying to find a way to fix it. Or they're going through an awareness or they're going through a realization. They're wanting to make their lives better. They're wanting to be better people. They're stopping off at a different town. But the people not getting on the ship are the people who are openly denying openly working against or even secretly for that matter working against themselves learning lessons and taking accountability for their actions and always blaming other people these are the people that are stuck these are the people who cover up their bad behavior through maybe being altruistic. They needed my help. They needed my money. They needed this. They needed that. I was there for them. Um, I'm going to bend over backwards for this friend. I'm going to bend over backwards. But in the meantime, their behavior behind the scenes is horrendous. It's not a match. It's a It's a conflict. It causes chaos. And you'll see chaos follow them around. It's just like they've got, they're like a tornado. And you, you look behind them and it's, it's nothing but debris. Pain, heartache, debris, separation, loss, betrayal, destruction, cheating, lying, stealing. Who's the common denominator here? I'll give you two guesses. You're only going to need one. One. 
wasn't me. I didn't do that. That's not my fault. Really? It's not? You happen to be present during all of this destruction. Who's the common denominator here? But those of you on the boat are going to your new town, your new layer, your new level in consciousness. And you're going to get settled in. And these people will not be part of that new beginning in your life. They're gone. It's done. It's over. It's like you're living in this empire, this castle that's surrounded by this great wall. All they can do is look in between the cracks and peep in. Hey, you remember me? You're too busy, man. No, I don't remember. Yeah, I remember you. But you got to fix yourself. You can't come into my kingdom until you fix yourself. Or match up with my energy at least. That is the story. That is the message. Get ready. That clock is ticking and that door is about to be open. What is behind it for you? It may blow you away. It may blow somebody else away too. Somebody's looking at you guys like you're that same person that they knew. They're looking at you saying, oh, you're the, you're this person, you're that person, I got you pegged. No, they don't have you pegged. They're in denial. They don't want, they don't want your, they don't want your story to end in a manner that does not match their, their sequel, their importance in your life their their story their fairy tale <clears throat> yeah they don't want something to end they don't want something to be completed they want you to stay exactly who you are so that they can poke holes so that they can take you to spiritual court You know what your ancestors and your your spirit guides and your higher self and and God, Allah, Buddha, whoever you know you you talk to, they're saying not on my watch, not on my watch. I'm sending in my League of Angels and they've got their briefcases and they know exactly what happened, and my innocent is innocent, and I'm going to make sure everybody knows. Everybody will know. Court is in session. The verdict is in. No appeal on the docket today. Just my own sin. Who holds the key? Might want to look up those lyrics. Maybe I'll find those lyrics and I'll, I'll put them in the description box below. Okay, guys. I have talked quite a bit, so I'm just going to do a little rapid here uh, monthlies are in process let's get into this and let's say our prayer by the way no weapon formed against you shall prosper and any tongue which rises up against you in judgment you shall condemn 
such as the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, saith the Lord. So it is. Let's go ahead and pray over the deck. bottom of the deck ten of pentacles reversed so the ten of pentacles reversed comes in and basically says that there could be a, a loss of money there could be a feeling of no stability no foundation no loyalty um, someone feels as though they don't have a family right now and you know maybe maybe that message <clears throat> excuse me was for was for all of you that are currently in a state of not feeling loved, not feeling like you have family. You have family here. We are a family here, and we will support you here. Absolutely. We respect each other here. You don't have to feel like this anymore. You don't have to feel like nobody's there for you anymore. You are worthy. You are intelligent. You are handsome. You are good looking. You what whatever you want to put on the physical because this is, you know, 10 of pentacles. It's the pentacles card. You can get this if this is what you want. You can, but whatever your energy you're putting out right now, perhaps, is working against you. And that's why it has not appeared yet. This could be family losing a lot of money. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> someone may have, and I hate to say this, someone may have thought that they were going to get a big inheritance. And somebody found out, like, yeah, I mean, as soon as this person in my family, as soon as they pass away, I'm, you know, I'm the only granddaughter or I'm the only daughter or I'm the only son or whatever, and I'm going to get this money. But then they find out that they were going to get, like, $3 million or something like that. And they only get, like, $200,000 of it because the rest of it was bequeathed to charities or, you know, maybe to helping animals, a pet shelter. I don't know, but something, <clears throat> gosh, <clears throat> someone doesn't want somebody to know about something. Let me clear my throat again. Hold on. Well, I'm really happy that the clearing of the throat and the coughing is getting a lot less. So I'm really happy about that. And I'm sure you guys will be very happy about that as well. But the the energy here is is one of someone may be getting karma as it relates to a house someone may have gotten karma as it relates to money associated with an inheritance they're not getting as much as they thought or they're not getting anything <clears throat> someone maybe didn't realize how much something cost i'm gonna leave that here for right now Okay, let's just, uh, let's get into the quick fire and see what's going on with this. Someone was bored. Uh, someone was not paying attention to a gift from God. They were more concerned with partying, going out, being part of a, you know, like a luxurious lifestyle and everything. And now they're finding out that it was all fake. 
like it wasn't true or someone was lying about how much money they had. Someone may have to take out a second mortgage to pay for something or someone may have to um, like borrow against their home. <clears throat> Someone did create some bad karma here. Remember what I said. Court is in session. All right, let's keep going. Yeah, someone tried to confuse somebody. Confuse somebody. Create distractions. Lots of options. Um, like in this weird fog. In this weird dream state. What do I do? What do I do? How do I handle this? What do I do? What's going on here? What are my options? Very interesting. This may have something to do with a King of Cups, a Pisces, a Cancer, a Scorpio, a Third Decan, Third Decan, Aquarius, masculine energy, very, very tumultuous on the inside, but cool as a cucumber on the outside. Something about cucumbers might be coming up. Um, someone was invited into somebody's home, but now they're being asked to leave. <clears throat> there was an uninvited guest in the home. Someone is having a hard time telling somebody to leave the home. Like, you you have to go. Uh, but it could also be where someone wants somebody to stay and someone else is saying, no, I'm sorry, I got to cut it short. I got to go. I got to go. I got things at my house. I got to get done. But this is someone very emotionally intelligent. This could even be someone in their masculine energy that's a psychic that knows that this is going to happen to someone. Oh, my goodness. An empress. Yep. Here she is, the divine feminine. <clears throat> the divine feminine. So this is a divine feminine. This is a mother figure. This is someone who creates. She is very well-rounded. She is, maybe she is in the process of reestablishing foundations and a home. She's really stepping into her empress energy, for sure. She may be in her empress energy, and there may have been in a situation, she may have been part of a situation here where Someone chose her over someone else or chose a lifestyle over her. And so it could have been this King of Cups. We don't know. But it did affect her home greatly. And so now she's reestablishing her Empress energy to start manifesting again. You know, maybe to turn this Ten of Pentacles from reverse to the upright. It's possible. Yeah, this... Uh, Empress energy does not want to have anything to do with this Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or Jupiter. That kind of comes and goes as they please. Or to be honest, someone who was a player, and this is player energy, someone who was a player is no longer a player. They want to settle down and they want to settle down with their Empress. Because their life is in, there's no structure, there's no foundation, there's no stability here. Yeah, someone had to be very strong. This could be a Leo energy as well. There could be Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, or Jupiter. Also a third decan, third decan, Leo, masculine energy. Wanting to create a level of stability. I'm going to be honest with you, some of you. Um, if you are the Empress and you're saying, you know, I, I just, I don't. I don't toy around with that. Um, I'm better than that. I'm just going to start rebuilding myself. I don't need your help. 
this King of Pentacles is going to try and find a way to get an in with this, uh, to get an in with this Empress through possibly giving her money or getting her support or getting her kind of dependent on him. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but that's what I'm getting. But yeah, she's already walked away from this King of Pentacles. Or this King of Pentacles is walking away from something and coming towards her. Because these are empty cups. This is also, I got to be honest with you, this is also someone finding out that someone quit drinking. They quit alcohol. Or they're not drinking as much. Or they quit an addiction. Definitely want to do that with an eclipse in Pisces. For sure. Someone is finally coming out of hiding. Um, they've already meditated, prayed. Uh, they've already done the self-reflection. And they're about ready or they are ready or they are getting back out there. They're getting back out there. They're not letting this deception, this betrayal, this truth, whatever they found out, they're not letting this get them down. They're not letting this hold them back. Yeah, they're defending their new beginning. Absolutely 100%. They're defending their new beginning. They're also, someone is also not allowed in the home. This could be a restraining order for some people. And someone was not expecting this at all. Like someone was not expecting something that is emotionally driven. Like this is like someone that just shows up on somebody's doorstep and they're like, hey, I want to talk. I want to talk. And this person says, you need to leave or I'm calling the police. Very calm and very sweet and put together. Just say, you have to leave or I'm calling the police. Please leave. And even though this person, maybe they did have good intentions, but maybe they did something to this person in the past that caused a level of instability or caused a level of uh, disloyalty or um, undulation in somebody's life. And this person is thinking, look, you know, they did it before. They're probably going to do it again. So why would I let them back in after what they did to me? Why would I even let them around my energy? And then this person who's being told to get off your property or to leave, this hits them in a different way. This isn't you coming out and basically saying, um, or like emotional vomit all over somebody. This isn't you sending them text after text after text after text. This isn't you yelling at them at the door. This isn't like that. This is something they were not expecting. And this hits them a completely different way. Completely different way. Yeah, because somebody's taken their power back. I think that this, um, this Empress, it's so interesting. You've got a dog reversed here, but then you got a dog upright here. So I think what's happening here someone might be using pets also as a way in to somebody's life um but what i feel is i feel like this empress who may be you know trying to find herself again this is oh this is also somebody's dogs having babies there might be a, a pet a pet being born for somebody or you're waiting for uh, the mother to give birth to a litter. Oh, how cute. Anyway, but this person, 
that is getting her empress energy back, her main focus is her money, her stability, and her value. It's not as much like the emotions. It's not as much the, you know, alluring, you know, body image. It's not as much the talking and the speaking and the truth. It's more about I am protecting my empress energy and I'm doing that through the value I hold for myself, the value I hold for my friends and my family, the value I hold for, you know, uh, the people, you know, that help me to survive, that help my business, my clients, you know, my loyalty to them. Uh, That's what I'm focused on. Focused on my work. I'm focused on regaining my stability. Because I was pretty much like left for dead here. I was... I was told that I was the one that was mentally unstable and now I realize I am not that person. I am the actual gift. I am the empress. I am. And now I have to defend myself. I've got to walk away from this, all these emotions I've put into this situation. I have to walk away from it. I've got to be strong. I can't let this person keep coming in and out of my life. It causes too much instability. Could be a family member, could be a coworker, could be an ex, a former lover, whatever. But this is what I have for our daily. I hope you liked the story at the beginning. Uh, Guys, let me know what you think about me sharing my downloads with you and if they're making any sense for you. Um, I certainly don't want to be, you know, sitting here talking to you. when I'm sure many of you are just very much interested in the tarot and what the tarot has to say. Um, But just let me know what you think about this and if you want the stories to be shorter or longer or or whatever. But sometimes I'll get many downloads and sometimes I won't get as much. But just wanted to let you know what, what I got. And it doesn't happen every single day, but I am getting a lot right now because I am going through detox. So just wanna give you that quick reminder. All right, everyone, monthlies are going to start getting posted and get ready for the transformation. Remember, 9 o'clock tonight, I'm going to be cutting loose. I'm going to be enjoying my life. I'm going to be doing a clearing and also a protection uh, ceremony because, as you know, as a divine feminine, we activate, we clear, and we protect. So the particular sections I'm going to be doing is clearing, protecting, and then activating. Okay. Let me know if you have any questions below. I'm, I'm happy to help. All right. I wish you the best. Much light, much love, many blessings, and catch you on the flip side.